If you're struggling to play lockdown coverage defense in Madden 24, you probably don't even understand what each specific coverage and zone is designed to do. So in today's Madden 24 video, I'm going to break down what each individual coverage does and then also break down all the individual zones in this year's game, break down their responsibilities so you guys can play better defense. Let's get into it now. YouTube, what is up? It is your boy Duke back here from sportsgamers.com and I want to do a deep dive into coverage defense in this video, specifically zone. Now, I will deal with some match too, but if you want a more in-depth video on matched coverage, make sure you drop me a like on this video. If we get to 500 likes, I will drop a match coverage detailed video as well. If you're new to the channel, man, show the love, subscribe, uh, comment, all that does help out a lot. Now, before we get too far in this video, you need to understand how coaching adjustments, specifically with zone drops, work. If you're going to set your zone drops or even change your zone cover setting to match, things are going to play different. For the purpose of this video, we're going to leave everything on default. Because, for example, if you set your hook zones to 10, no matter what you do, any hook zone, any yellow zone will play at 10 yards. It doesn't matter what hook zone it is. There are several different ones. If you shade them up or down, it will stay at 10. Same with flats. You could have a, a cloud, a soft squat, a hard flat. But if you set your flat zone drops to any setting, no matter what type of flat, um, blue flat I should say, or if you shade it up or down, that's the depth it will play at. So you really want to leave these on default so you can have different zones, play different depths, and shade up or down. Unless there's just one route that's killing you in a specific area of the field. Also, with your zone coverage setting in general, you can set it to default or match. Now this is like I said... Uh, we will cover a little bit of match in this video, but we're mostly going to focus on zone drop. If you set your zone cover setting to match, certain, excuse me, certain zones will actually match instead of playing a zone drop. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to set it to default. Now, we're going to start with cover two. There's three main zones in this year's game that we're going to cover in this video. Cover two, cover three, and cover four. Each of these defenses have specific zone assignments that you need to understand how they work. So let's just start with a Tampa 2. And we'll just go up against trips. Now, what we got here in a cover 2 is essentially the way cover 2 is designed is your outside corners are going to be playing the flat. And then your, your safeties are really designed to take away the deep sideline. And, you know, the middle linebacker or whoever's in the mid read is supposed to close off the deep middle of the field. Whereas whoever's in the vert hooks, um, whether it be outside linebackers, slot corners, whatever, those guys are really looking to cover outside that, the uh, hash marks kind of in the seam area. Now, cover two is going to have potentially different types of flats, um, different you know ways the hook zones play. It all depends. So let's just start with the flat zones first. A cloud flat. So a cloud flat basically is designed to take away about a 10 to 15 yard depth on the sideline down the field. It's important to note that anytime you press any sort of flat zone, whether it's a cloud flat, a hard flat, a soft squat, if you press your flat zones and they line up on the basically the line of scrimmage like this, even if you zone drop them, they're always going to get beat over the top. So what if you're in cover two, you really want to keep your flat zones backed up so that they can defend the sideline better. Now, if you have a hard flat, the hard flats are literally going to take away that first quick read into the flat. So if someone's running a five yard out, the running back's going out of the backfield, you have a tight end or slot receiver just hitting a quick flat, that's what the hard flat is going to defend. However, if they have a corner route that goes over the top of the hard flat, that would be how you could get exploited. Now the last type of zone, for a flat anyways, on a cover two, is going to be a soft squat. A soft squat is essentially going to... and to really get the full effect of a soft squat, you need to have your match coverage on in your zone uh, drop settings. You need it set to match for zone coverage because a soft squat has matching principles. And that, that's what I meant. We'll cover a little bit of match in this video, but you know, for a full in-depth match breakdown, <laughs> make sure you guys like the video, man. Like I said, 500 likes and we'll get to it. But I do cover all these rules a lot on sportsgamers.com in my VIP membership. If you guys want some more info on that, Click the link in the description. It's also pinned in the comments. Coupon code Duke will get you 10% off, off your order. But essentially, a soft squat will, if you have your match setting on, basically play a match rule. So basically what's going to happen is if anybody hits the flat, it then has to take that flat route. So like right here, let's say that the slot receiver was on a flat, outside receiver was just on a streak, right? 
Well, the soft squat would have to respect the flat, so it would jump on the flat, leaving the streak. Whereas if someone just ran four verticals and there was no threat to the flat on each side of the soft squat, uh, respectively, the soft squats would match vertically downfield. So they do have a little bit more versatility, but like I said, to get the effect of them, you do need the match coverage setting on. Now, then, you know, in cover two, we got the safeties. They're going to be in deep zones. Now, on this year's game, there's basically three kinds of deep zones. There's deep halves, which is what you typically find in cover two, which is what the safeties are going to be in. Uh, this is what they are in right now, deep half. A deep half is essentially designed to play half of the field, right? So the one on the left is designed to take away the left sideline, the left half. The one on the right is designed to take away the right sideline, the right half. That's why it's called a deep half. You're covering about 50% of the field. So this zone, you know, has a lot of responsibility. Um, definitely need fast players here if you are going to even have a chance to go to sidelines. But typically, cover two, uh, there are ways to get over to the flat zones and then underneath the deep zones, right? Um, you also could have an uh, inside quarter. Now, you won't really see an inside quarter zone on um, basically cover two because then, as you guys can see, if you have inside you know, quarter zones, they're going to give up the sideline because they're playing more so the, the, you know, the seam area. Now, a quarter zone... That's designed to play a quarter of the field. So they could get more aggressive, right? Because they're only playing a quarter of the field. Um, but, you know, they're, you know, you would never want these uncovered too because then you would give up the sideline. Finally, there's thirds. There's inside thirds and outside thirds. Once again, you don't really see thirds on cover two because of the simple fact that a third, again, that's going to play about a third of the field. So, you know, that's going to, again, leave openings on a cover two. Now, hook zones are really what you need to focus on a lot in cover two. Most of the time, you're going to see the inside linebacker in a mid-read, and then the slots or outside linebackers in vert hooks. So, a mid-read, again, really needs... Like, honestly, if you're playing a lot of cover two, you do need match settings on uh, so that these zones can play properly. But a mid-read is really supposed to take away that middle of the field, deep middle. However, he doesn't really do a good job. If you are going to play a lot of um, cover two, you almost need your um, middle linebacker in a middle third, uh, you know, inside third, middle third, to close that middle off. The mid read is just too easily exploitable down the middle, or you can just look to guard that yourself. Now, again, the vert hooks, they're normally on cover two, designed to be outside the hashes, covering the seams, the quick seam passes. Again, you probably want your match setting on so that these can match vertically down the field on different route combinations if necessary. These are the types of zones you typically do see on a cover two. You're not really going to see a lot of hook curls, seam flats, you know, you know, thirds, quarter deep zones, none of that. However, you will see those in cover two or cover three. Now, I'm sorry, cover three or cover four, which we'll get to in a second. So let's look at, let's just start with cover three, guys. And cover three by default, you'll see, is a little bit different. So cover three is going to essentially have three deep zones instead of two. That's how we get cover three, three deep zones. Cover two, two deep zones. Cover four, four deep zones. So it's essentially, that's how it's, it makes sense between cover two, cover three, and cover four, right? So in cover three, the deep zones are thirds, meaning that they play a third of the field. So you have a safety in an inside third, rotating into the middle of the field to take away the basically the deep middle of the field, right? Then you have the two outside corners and outside thirds, again, guarding the third to where they're responsible for that deep sideline. Now, by default, you generally have like the slot corner or outside linebacker in, you know, a curl flat. And curl flats and seam flats are purple versus the hard flats, cloud flats, and soft squats are blue when you look at the play art. And that's how you know if you are going to set zone drop settings, what, you know, each one's going to do. Now, I'll tell you guys, these curl flats, these purple flats, they are absolutely useless. The only time you're ever going to want a purple type of flat is if you're playing some sort of match coverage, which, like I said, I will kind of get into it later in the video. But for the purpose of basic zone drop defense, you never want these purple flats. They do not cover anything on this year's game unless you're going to zone drop them to a specific depth. They're just not good. Even if, like, they just, they they really don't cover anything. They don't get to the sidelines fast enough to guard the sidelines. They don't get to the flats fa fast enough to guard the, guard the flat. And they're kind of just in between the middle of nowhere. They're in no man's land. 
So, you know, I, I don't like these. So if I'm in cover three or cover four, you know, I generally say, shade my coverage underneath to maybe get a hard flat to take away the quick flat area. And when you have like a slot corner and a hard flat, that's good. They'll take away the quick flats. Or you could shade down, then shade up to get cloud flats, which again, that would be more at a 10 to 15 yard depth to take away these sidelines. Now, you also typically have hook curls, right, in a cover three. These hook curls generally will be by the safety that, you know, is not, you know, in the deep zone. And then maybe a linebacker, right? Now, hook curls, again, they're designed to really guard that middle of the field area, right? Kind of more so, most of the time, more so like inside the numbers, hash area, the, the quick little seam routes, you know, the post, the drags over the middle, right? You know, these can be very, very beneficial, and they're generally who you're going to want to use her to give yourself more flexibility over the middle. But, like, if you shade a hook curl down, they're going to come down at more of that five-yard depth to stop, like, the quick drags. If you shade them over the top, they're going to be more, you know, at that 10 to 15-yard type depth to stop, like, you know, the posts, the quick seam throws, etc. So these guys can be very versatile. Um, if you really wanted your hook zones to always play a specific depth, again, you could do that in your zone drop settings. Now, the thing about cover three is that because these deep zones have to guard a third of the field, they're really not going to do that great of a job at the sidelines. If you do have abilities on them, like deep out zone KO, they'll do a lot better job. But if you play regs or a mode of no abilities on your corners, they can get fried. So that's when we're going to get into cover four. Cover four is going to be similar to cover three, but the big difference in cover four is instead of having third deep zones, you get quartered deep zones. As you guys can see, now we have four deep zones, so they have to guard a quarter of the field versus a third. What this means is these deep zones can play a lot more aggressively. So a quarter deep zone guards the sideline a lot better than a third would. Also with these safeties in the quarters, They'll defend those quick seam throws a lot better because they can kind of just sit in this area versus having to rotate to guard the whole middle by themselves. Um, you're still getting those curl flats by the slot corners. And again, those guys are pretty much useless. They do not do a good job. So I like to shade them underneath to get a hard flat to make sure they'll actually cover the quick flat area. And again, you get these hook curls. Again, the hook curls are really designed to defend that middle of the field, you know, in the box type area. You'd seem really, like I said, inside the hashes and numbers. Most of the time, this will be who you use her. Now, there are some exceptions to the, this, like I said, if you're going to get into match. I don't want to get too far into match, but I will just break down quickly like a cover four quarters. So the thing about a cover four quarters is it looks like a cover four, but the biggest difference you see is you have quarter flats to the slot corners in, that are in the purple flat zones. Quarter flat is the matching, one of the ma main matching zones in this year's game. You know, if you have your zone covered setting to match, those quarter flats, they're going to match as well as the four deep zones. So if you actually call a cover four quarters or palms, those are matching defenses. Cover four drop is zone drop. Cover four quarters and palms is match. And on these defenses, depend, again, it really depends upon the formation. There's so many rules depending upon the offensive formation. But the four deep zones and the quartered flats will match different route combos in different ways. Again, most people will play on that linebacker hook zone. That also, by the way, if you weren't playing on him, the three rec hook zone will match as well. But if you were not playing on him, guys, a three-rec hook zone, his first like instinct, his first step, his first priority is the number three receiver based upon how the offensive formation is numbered, which is why it's called a three-receiver or three-rec hook zone. So I know this was a lot of information. However, you know, if you like these type of breakdowns, if you want to see more in depth, if you want to see me get into match coverage rules as well, Make sure to drop me a like, comment on the video. Until next time, it's your boy Duke, and I'm out of here.